Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the channel. In this video I'm aiming to give you a brief introduction to the Entity Component System. So let's start with what is an Entity Component System. The Entity Component System or ECS for short is an architectural pattern used mostly in games that allows for a greater flexibility in categorizing entities for example player, enemy, weapons etc and separating the data, the components, from the actual code, the system. The data-oriented design is rapidly gaining ground in the game development industry over the traditional object-oriented programming because it can bring more efficiency and if done right it can scale better on bigger projects with bigger teams, meaning it's much easier to find bugs, increase performance or add new systems late in the development life cycle or even after the game is released. ECS and OOP are mutually exclusive. Some people may argue that elements of OOP can be successfully integrated into the ECS paradigm, but the general consensus and my observation so far is that if you really want to profit from the ECS advantages, you need to leave all the OOP techniques behind as combining them will not only make things murkier for you and potentially your teammates if you're working in a team, but can also lead you to pitfalls that will break the ECS. The pure ECS architecture gives you a clear separation between data and code, letting you optimize for performance and build more complex interactions. Now, what is an entity? An entity is a non-abstract in-game object like a car or a weapon or a bullet. Entities have no data and no methods attached to them. You can think of them more like tags. Now what is a component? A component is simply a data container. Any in-game object has multiple aspects to it that define what it is and how it interacts with the world. For example, the player might move with a certain speed, it is controlled by a player, be able to collide with other objects, has a position and a rotation, has animations, etc. The OOP paradigm does not have concepts of many aspects. The properties are hard-coded into the class definition. Sure, you can have inheritance to define an enemy and then from that define specific type of enemies, but you can't use properties from the player, for example, which in games can sometimes be very useful. For example, you take control over an enemy by simply adding to the enemy the input component. And lastly, what is a system? A system provides the implementation of the components, but it does it differently compared to the OOP which would be that for each component to have its own methods that are then externally invoked. The way the ECS handles it is to have continuously running systems that have their own methods which operates on the components. The difference is that in OOP, theoretically, if you have a thousand units on the screen, each have their own methods, whereby in ECS you have an external system of methods that operate on the components, aka the data, of those units. And lastly, let's talk about why Unity is starting to focus on ECS. Unity is already starting to implement the ECS model into their engine and has big plans for it, which in conjunction with their new job system that they're building should bring big improvements, not only to the performance of future games, but also to the scalability of set games, bringing into focus a new era for building games from huge AAA titles to tiny messenger or web apps. And that is the most important part of why they're transitioning to the ECS system, because it led them and us to modularize our code so only what's essential for our project is included increasing performance in big games and decreasing file size and loading times in small games. So that's it for the introduction to ECS. If you liked this video, please give it a like or a share. If you want to see more content like this, please subscribe. And if you have the possibility, please consider supporting me on Patreon from just a dollar a month. See you next time.